Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression. Sine of 3x divided by sine of x minus cosine of 3x divided by cosine of x. I can't remember if I made this problem before, maybe a long time ago. Totally forgot, but I think it's a nice problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. First of all, before we start solving the problem, I want to show you a graph of this as a function. Why? You'll see why in a little bit. Wow f of x is kind of like a straight line. Why is that happening? That just means that we have a constant function. No, it's okay. So let's go ahead and find out what that constant is. If you know it, please don't say it. Okay, so here's some formulas that's going to help us, hopefully, right? And let's use these. This is going to be my first method, and I'll be presenting two methods. So first, we need to look at the ratio of sine 3x divided by sine x. And as you can see, sine 3x can be written in terms of sine x, which is nice. Because what we want to do is we want to divide it by sine x. And same thing goes for cosine of 3x. It's written in terms of cosine x only. So let's go ahead and take that and divide it by cosine x. And what we're going to do is, this is our expression, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this expression and see what that's going to look like. Now, here I can factor out a sine x, obviously, right? That's going to give me 3 minus 4 sine squared x divided by sine x, and then minus cosine x factor out, 4 cosine squared x minus 3, that's divided by cosine x. Cosine x and sine x cancel out, right? And we end up with something nicer. Let's find out what that looks like. 3 minus 4 sine squared x minus, I'm supposed to distribute to negative, 4 cosine squared x, and then plus 3. Okay, 3 plus 3 is what? 6, right? Okay. And then, now we can factor out a negative 4, and that gives us sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And guess what? This is a super duper important identity. And yes, this is equal to 1 for all values of x, real and complex, right? So the answer is 6 minus 4, which is as easy as 2. So the answer is 2. That's why we got the graph of a constant function. Even though it wasn't numbered, I didn't want you to see the numbers. That's why they're hidden. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is also nice. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, right? To use um, formulas, you can definitely use them. But the second formula uses something smarter, a smart idea. That's why knowing the trigonometric identities is important. So what do we start with? Sine of 3x divided by sine x minus cosine of 3x divided by cosine x. We already know the answer, so what's the fun, right? Well, let's see how this unfolds. We're going to make a common denominator. So multiply the sine 3x by cosine x, and multiply the cosine of 3x by sine x, and then divide it by the product, the common denominator, sine x times cosine x. So it's kind of like sim simplifying an identity using some identities. Well, did I say identity? It is an identity, but simplifying an expression using identities. So, what does the numerator look like? If you know your identities, you'll hopefully recognize sine alpha, cosine beta, minus cosine alpha, sine beta, as sine alpha minus beta. These are called sum and difference formulas. It basically gives you a chance to find the sine or cosine or tangent of the sum or difference of two angles. And using these formulas, you can find sine 15 degrees, and so on and so forth. So many other things. But the point is, this is my alpha, and this is my beta. If you want to use uh, call it x, that's fine too. So the numerator is actually the same thing as sine of 3x minus x. Notice how I'm picking up the, the values of alpha and beta, and that's divided by sine x cosine x. At this point, this may not look very meaningful to you, but keep going because 3x minus x is 2x, and that gives us sine of 2x, and if you recognize it, great, but if you haven't, I'm going to tell you something. This is the numerator uses the double angle formula. You must know those formulas. There's only like, I think, five of them. Three for cosine 2x uh, and 
one each for sine and tangent. Cotangent is just reciprocal. So to keep a long story short, sine 2x can be written as 2 sine x times cosine x. Isn't that fun? And then, and where does that come from? From the sum formulas. If you have sine alpha, but anyways, you can do it easy, right? Hopefully. If not, please let me know in the comment section. And now the fun part, sine x cancels out, cosine x cancels out, and we end up with a 2. And didn't we find that already? Yes, with the first method, it was a little painful, kind of brute force here, right? Because you had to use the cubic formulas. What would happen if you had 5x, 6x, 7x? Would you use the formulas? Sure, why not, if you know them. And if you don't know them, you can always come up with the formulas. Let's say you're trying to come up with sine of 5x. You can write it as sine of 3x plus 2x and then expand it using the sum formula and then use all of those identities to put it together. It's going to be a little painful or you can just look it up. Anyways, I just wanted to briefly talk about a third method, even though that wasn't planned initially. The third method for an expression like this, and of course, this is not always going to work. That's why it's kind of like, you know, push it to the edge and don't always use it. It's not always available. But if it's available, like let's say you're taking a multiple choice test, right? I mean, don't you love multiple choice? It's beautiful, right? Because you can plug in numbers. So here, you can basically replace x with 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians, however you like it and then just evaluate this expression. Plug it in, you're gonna get sine 90 degrees divided by sine 30 minus cosine of 90 degrees divided by cosine of 30. But notice that cosine of 90 on the unit circle is zero. So we don't have to worry about it. We only have to worry about this. Sine 90 is one, and sine 30 is one half. The reciprocal of one half is two. Wait a minute, is it always gonna be two? Yes, remember you looked at the graph, it is a constant function. In other words, we're finding a, fun a constant value. If you had the multiple choice choices, then obviously this would be a lot easier to do. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.